Good morning. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Reach down, grab you a hymn book, turn with me to 522 when the morning comes. Get you to stand with me. We'll sing all three verses. Hymn number 522. <laughs>
bow before you this morning. Thanking you for the privilege of worshiping you and spending time in your presence, holy God. Lord, the storms of life happen, and we understand that. We understand that we go through difficult times and hardships, and our journey this year has been about facing those uncertainties, facing those frustrations and heartaches. The journey's been real, but so have you. So have you, Jesus. And we thank you for the honor and the privilege, holy God, to worship you today. Maybe in the middle of a storm. Maybe in the middle of uncertainty. Maybe in the middle of pain and, and, and difficulty. But we're here today to see you, Jesus. Because it's in you that we find hope. It's in you that we have peace. It's in you, Jesus, that we have comfort. It's in you, Jesus, that we have healing and salvation. And, and, and we thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for us. We are so blessed. So blessed. Simply blessed this time with you, Jesus. That's our cry. Pray in his name. Everybody say Sing this to me. On your past, Lord, you weary. Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel the empty feeling? The shame's an open ceiling. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Thank you. 
you're blessed, amen. Wow. So Jesus says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, the storms are real. Storms happen, we know that. You don't have to be told storms are real. I get that. You've been through them, you faced them. The, the adversity of, of, of life is real. The hardships of life are real. 
Um, and uh, you know, it's called life, it's called reality, it's called all through scripture, you know, that uh, the Bible says that we will go through those hard days and hard times and hard seasons. And, and <clears throat> if a pastor ever tells you that, uh, you know, once you come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, your problems will go away, run away from them because that's a lie. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. The reality is, is the, the, the Bible says this, it rains on the just and the unjust. Amen? Life happens. The difficulties that, that we face until we get to heaven. And once we're in heaven, it won't be anymore. Come on. Amen. But until we get there, there will be those hardships. There will be those storms that we face. But here's truth. And here's what I want to, to nail home today. If I could have bring home, maybe would be the better way of saying that. But is that even though the storms are going to happen, and they will, and even though the hardships are going to happen, and they will, is that you and I can have stability in the storms. You and I can have foundation, foundational stability. In other words, they're going to happen, they're going to come, but you and I can stand solid. There can be stability in my storm. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He says... In chapter 7, in verse 24, Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain, the storm happened. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat on that house, but it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Because storms are going to happen. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat on that house, and it fell. And not only did it fall, but it was a great fall, Jesus said. I want to read that same passage uh, in the in the NIV real quick. Jack, you throw that up there. We'll shoot to the next one. No, oh, that's the next one. <clears throat> There's a phrase in the NIV. It says, "It says put to practice." Whoever does put to practice, huh? Okay, we got it. Therefore, any, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. In other words, does them. The New King James says, who hears these sayings of mine and does them. The NIV translates that to puts it into their everyday routine. Puts it into practice. It's so important that we hear what Jesus is saying and we do what Jesus is saying and puts it into practice. And he, and he talks about this. He says, I will liken him, that person who puts this into practice, who does what I'm telling them to do, I will liken them to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The first step is knowing Jesus. The first step is having that relationship with Jesus Christ, knowing that you know, that you know, that you know, that you're saved. Come on. Amen? That if, that if anything happens to you, that you're heaven bound, that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, guys, I'm not talking about up here in the head. I'm talking about in the heart. I'm talking about knowing Jesus, not knowing about Jesus. I'm talking about knowing Jesus. And, 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 and Jesus says, that person who is on the, on the rock, the foundation is the rock, and that rock is Jesus Christ. And so Jesus says, hey, you child of mine, hey, you Christian, storms are going to happen. You need to know who you are. You need to know where you're, who your foundation is, where you're settled at.
And that's in Jesus. In Christ. Amen. That's who, I'm, who, 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 who my solid rock is. Is Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, you need to put to practice these habits that make sure I am the most important part of your life. The most important part. Because if, if storms are going to happen. Storms are real, say me. And you need to have the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. Come on. And you need to, to, to put into practice, you know, Christianity, if you would, the study of the Word of God, the, 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 the prayer time, your, 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 your uh, worship time with the family of God. We'll see that in just a minute. You need to put those things into practice. I used to have a coach that would tell me this, guys. Practice makes, say it again. Practice makes, if you don't practice something, how can you ever expect to be good at it? Come on. And he says, practice what I'm telling you. Do these things that I'm telling you. Because the storm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just tell her it's that old preacher. Amen. Because, because storms are going to happen. It may be Tracy. It may not be the preacher at all. Come on. <laughs> but uh, because storms are going to happen in your life. And, and that's real. That's the reality of life. That the winds are going to blow. That the, that the rain is going to come against. And, the, and, 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 and that's the reality of life. That is going to happen. Whether we like it or not. Whether we want it to or not. It's kind of like you turn on the Weather Channel to see, to see what old Adam's got to say or whatever channel you listen to or watch. And, and they tell you, well, it's going to be a strong storm that it means to do something. It's going to be a strong storm. That everybody looks at you can't change that. I can't change that. It means it's going to be a strong storm that whether I like it or not. Whether, I mean, that's the natural, whether I like it or not, or whether I want it to happen or not. I may have plans. I want to go out and have a picnic on Wednesday. I don't want it to rain. I don't want it. I can't change that. You can't change the fact that storms are going to happen in your life. The winds are going to blow. The rain's going to descend. The waves are going to come crashing down. You better be ready for it. Come on. You got to be ready. Because that's a realism. That's the reality of, of life. It's going to happen. And, and we don't know when it's going to happen. We just know it's going to happen. And so I need to make sure if storms are going to happen in my life, and they will, that I've got my priorities right. Come on. That I've got my priorities right. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 6 in verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things shall be what? Help me out. Added to you. Seek him what? Say it loud. First. Seek him first. Make him the priority of my life because the reality is storms are going to happen. And i got to make sure when storms happen, I have him as my solid foundation. I have him as my priority because that's real. Because you know what happens when your priorities are messed up? You know what happens? And, and, and for some of us, some of us, this, is, this verse, next verse isn't even going to be more difficult. Paul says this in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, in verse 6. Don't worry about anything. But preacher, do you know what's happening to me? Do you know the storm that I'm facing? Do you, are you a child of God? Yes, I'm saved. I'm born again. Know that I'm saved. You're on that solid rock foundation. I am. But, but, but preacher, don't you know what I'm facing? Facing in the reality of the storm I'm going through, the hardship of the storm I'm going through, preacher, you don't get it. You don't get it. I don't care God's word says, be anxious for nothing. Or let me put it, this is the, the whole thing translation. It says, don't you worry 
about anything. Oh, because if we're honest, we worry about everything. Come on. God knows that. He knows my heart. He knows your heart. He knows that we can worry about the storms that we're going through. The storms that we face. And 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 you know, he, he knows this too, guys. He knows that the the, the thing, the, the probably the, the the three big ones, if you would, that we worry about the most. You know what the thing that you that you're honest, that you and I worry and we worry about if we had to prioritize and say this is one of the biggies in my life. Would be money, would be income, would be how are we gonna do this? And how are we gonna pay this? And how you know, and, and we tend to we tend to worry about that. We tend to worry about where's it gonna come from? How, how are we gonna how are we gonna make it through? How are we gonna get the 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 the, the ends to me? And here's what Jesus says, guys, because if you're honest, is anybody here honest enough to say at some point? On this journey called 2022, you have worried about money. Come on. You worried about where it's going to come from. How you're going to build it. Here's what Jesus said. Make me the foundation. Make me first. Put me first in your finances. And watch what I can do. Because those storms are going to come. Hey, hey. Have we not seen the uncertainty of today? Have we not looked at the 401? <clears throat> oh my. Oh, scary. Scary. But I, I, you know, I want to retire in, in 10 years or whatever. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wrong. Maybe, you know, you start worrying about it. And Jesus is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I knew who was going to be president. I knew what was going to take. I knew what was going to happen. Put me first in your finances. And, and, and because this storm that we're walking through right now, this storm that you and I face, Jesus has to be the center of my finances, the center of my, my, my you know, right there. I'm on that solid rock. And here's what he promises. He promises, I'll see you through this storm. Come on. I won't leave you in this storm. I'll be your stability in this storm. I'll get you through it. Come on. How many of you know he will? How many of you have seen his faithfulness and his goodness in your life? Say amen. Know that when he says, if you'll put me first, and it's about me. I'll see you through. He tells a story in Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. In verse 16. Luke chapter 12, in verse 16, he says this. He said, he spoke a parable to them saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. So you've got a rich man who's got got this incredible ground that blesses him and gives him uh, plenty of back. And he thought, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? And so he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns. I'm going to build bigger barns and greater barns. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Lord, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Jesus said, let me tell you a story. Let me 
me tell you a story about a rich man. And this rich man, and he's getting, he's being blessed and blessed, and he looks out there and he thinks, man, how am I? I just can't, I just can't keep up with the blessing. I can't keep up with what's happening here. I'm, I, I'm just gonna have to tear down my barns and build me some bigger barns so that when I get all of my bounty, all of my blessing, all of that which is for me, I'm gonna put it over here in my buildings and then I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna eat and sleep and be happy. Jesus said, you fool. It ain't about you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I'm the one that makes this happen. Not you, fool. You didn't make this happen. Who made it happen? Who made this happen? Who blessed it? God did. God did, but he didn't see that. He didn't see his blessing was because of God. He didn't see his blessing and, and his bounty that he was receiving was because of God. You know who he had the, the, the gall and the nerve to think was making this happen? He thought he was. You ever heard somebody say, I'm a self-made millionaire? No, you're not. No, you're not. My Bible says all the gold and the silver belong to him. My Bible says the cattle of a thousand hills belong to the earth, and the fullness thereof is his. It's all his. Come on. And until we see that, until we get that, until we understand, it ain't about me who's taking care of me. It's about Jesus who provides for me. It's about Jesus who takes care of me. I need to make sure that I understand that what I have is all because of him. And that I'm blessed because of him. And that what I, my, you know, I need to make sure. Because here's the thing, guys. Finances, you know, if you think it's all about you and it's up and down and up, understand this. It's him who blesses you. <laughs> it's him who takes care of you. Never, never miss that. And, 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 and Jesus said, remember, keep me first. And in my finances, the way that I show that Jesus is the priority of my life, that Jesus is my stability in the middle of storms that are happening even right now out there, the, re the, the way that I show who is first in my finances is I'm obedient to what his word teaches. I'm obedient to this, God. My Bible says this. You give back to God. And you give back a tithe or 10% right off the top. The Bible says it can't cost it first fruits. We see that in uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9. It says, Honor the Lord with your possessions. Come on. And with the first fruits of your increase right off the top. Keep reading verse 10. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow in your life. In other words, you honor God because God says to do it, and God's going to do what? Help me out. God's going to honor you. God's going to bless you. You give. Everybody look this way. You cannot outgive God. And if you will be obedient and give that which he says to give, and you say, why do I give it, preacher? Because you're putting him first. You're making him the priority. In the middle of your storm, that storm couldn't be financial, and you're making him the priority. In your life, you're saying, Jesus, I want to obey you. I want to give like you say to give. I'm going to honor you because you say you're going to honor me, and I trust that God. Guys, I've seen it. You cannot outgive God. I've also seen a movement to say, well, you know what? Tithing's not in the Bible, and doing this is not in the Bible, and you don't need to tithe, and you, you don't need to. Let me, everybody look this way. I, I would be uh, horrible, horrible as a pastor to look you and say, you don't have to give. Because you know what that's saying? That's saying, when, when I say that, you don't have to be obedient to the Word of God. What I'm saying when I say you don't have to give is that, number one, you're not, you don't have to be obedient, but number two, you're going to miss out on blessing, and I'm wronging you. I'm wronging you because God 
Let's just try it. And see if I won't bless you. How many of you know that's true? Say amen. Somebody give me a testimony. Amen. No, it's real. No, it's real. Man, you, you made it. And, 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 and you didn't even know how you were going to make it. But God showed up because you've been faithful and he's faithful. Come on. I see it. Over and over. So that storm's going to happen. That storm is happening. Right here in front of our eyes. That storm's happening. And my Bible says that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And I trust that. It's amen. So I put him first. Matthew 6, 33, he said, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I put him first in my finances. And when I put him first in my finances, guys, he blesses and he honors when I honor him. Whoever puts into practice, whoever does what I tell him to do, I liken him, he says, to that one that's built on the rock because the storm is going to come. There's also relationship storms that we face. Because Christianity is all about relationships. My relationship with God, my relationship with people around me. My Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 12, that you and I are part of the body. You are the body of Christ and members individually. You are part. Everybody look this way. If you're not involved in the body, your part means nothing. You have a part. You have a function. And everybody, this body needs you. Amen? I need you. We need you. This body needs you because you are part of the body. And, 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 and we need you. And, and, and Jesus says, hey, hey, Ken, if you want me to bless you, put in the practice what I tell you to do about your finances, and I'm going to take care of you. But let me tell you this, guys. He also says put in the part. But, but because in, in the, the storms affect finances, the storms affect relationships. And, and here's true. Storms affect this place. And we need you. I can, we can't do it without you. It ain't going to be no I, it's a we. It's a us. We can't do this without you. We need you. Amen? And if you will put into practice, you know what the Bible says? Don't forsake yourself. The, the sibling of yourself. Uh, in, in other words, don't don't leave this place out. Because we need you and you need this. And and, and if, if there was ever a place I needed to be when I'm in the middle of a storm in my life, it's right here, surrounded by God's people. Come on. Amen. Let God's people pray for me. Let God's people love on me. Let God's people encourage me and, and edify me and lift me up and be there for me. Guys, we need that solid foundation. And Jesus says, if you'll put me first, you'll put me first to do the things that I say to do. It is so important. So important to put me first, whether it's in my finances or whether it's in my relationships. One more. You ever said this? I just can't. I can't figure out how to. I got too much to do on my time. Too much to do on my schedule. I, I just can't. I can't get get it all done. You ever been there? I'm overbooked. It's just me. <laughs> you know. I'm gonna go get it done. I said that. Here's what Jesus said. Make me a priority. Put me first. Because, you know, the Bible says this in the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 16, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. How many of you know that's amen? Hmm? Making the most of this. Making the most of every opportunity because of what's going on. Preaching my schedule is tight. I don't have time. I, I'm, I'm blown away by people that don't have time for God. You know, it's like I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I got too much going on. I just don't see me being able to make it to church. I got too much going on. I just don't seem to be able to fit Jesus.
to see him. My daily schedule. And everybody look this way. You wonder why your world's turned upside down? You wonder why your world's in a, your life's in a mess? You don't have time for him. You wonder, want to know why everything you touch is messed up? You don't have time for him. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things were at, will be added unto you. Everybody look this way. You have to make time. You have to make him a priority. And until you do, Because the storms are real and the storms are going to happen until you fit him into your schedule, until you make him a priority in your life. Those storms are going to blow and those storms are going to, you're going to be like that one on the sand and they're going to push you this way and push you this way. And they're going to happen. You have to make him a priority. You're too busy not to spend time with God. Let that sink in what I just said. Because your life is crazy. Your life is heavy. You say, preacher, I can't afford to tie. You can't afford not to tie. Put it first. Because storms are real. Put it forward first. Because he promises. I'll bless you. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things, all these things, He says, shall be added unto you. so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. In verse 2. Looking. Here's how I run my race. Here's how I get through the storm. I'm on him. He's first in my life. He is a priority in my life. And I'm looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of my faith. In other words, guys, he's going to make sure that when that storm happens, and that storm does happen, and that storm will happen, and it's happening right now before our very eyes, that you and I are solid in that storm, that you and I are getting through that storm, that you and I come out the other side of that storm. He is the author and the finisher. Come on. He's going to make sure. set before him, enduring the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He says this, guys, you put me first. I don't want you to be worried. I don't want you to live your life full of worry. How many people would <coughs> you don't have to say man? I just want you to add to your heart. Because I want to finish reading that verse. <coughs> Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God needs you. You see the storm in my life. You see the financial storm, the relational storm, the schedule storm. You see that those are big things in our lives. We don't have time for Him, really. We don't have time. You don't have not have time for Him. You need Him. Say, preacher, I don't have time for this place. You need this place. This place needs you. And the 
peace of God. The word, that is the word is his peace. And the peace of God, which blows people away, surpasses all understanding. Will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. His peace. You see, when I put him first, and the storms blow, and they will. I'm not worried. We had this conversation 15 minutes, an hour ago, Tracy and I. He's sitting right here, and, and we were talking about his surgery, when his surgery's coming up, and he's like, I'm not worried. You know why? He's standing on that rock. There's nothing, what is, how's worrying about it gonna add one cubic to a stature, as, as the word God said. It's not. He's just hanging out in peace. He didn't ask for that storm. But, he, but, but here's the thing. He has a peace about that story because of who he's standing on and who he's involved. He's put Jesus first. Make that your priority is Jesus. Come on. And the peace that passes all understanding, that blows people's mind, you'll be enveloped in that peace and you'll have that peace in your room. You know what? I don't see the end of the storm. I don't see the light. But bless God, I know there's a light. I know there's an end. Because he's seen me through before. He'll see me through the day. Amen. And if I ask you this question, who's he seen through in this place? Who's he been there for in this place? Everybody in this place has to stay. So I'm going to ask you, has he seen you through? Has he been there for you? Has he been your rock in the middle of your storm? Come on. If he has, stand with Stay with me. Sing this song.